Hello guys, uh, here back again with uh, another video on uh, uh, using like normal um, op amps to uh, use them as a, as a drivers to power amplifiers. Uh, so basically just continuing the previous series, the couple of videos I posted. And this is just a, a modification to it. So. Uh, this is more of a conventional power uh, amplifier design uh, versus the one I presented earlier where uh, the, the design wasn't that common. This design is very common. You see this in a lot of uh, commercial amplifiers. Uh, basically, uh, they use a similar type of uh, configuration. This is uh, your, uh, I guess, uh, your class AB output amplifier as you can see I have two uh, power transistors here uh, the top guy and the bottom guy driven by two uh, uh, other transistors so basically sort of in a Darlington type configuration still and uh, in order to uh, achieve class uh, AB uh, uh, I, I use uh, your uh, your uh, your VBE multiplier circuit to give me to eliminate the crossover distortion, uh, and uh, basically I use a pot here to tune the uh, the amount of um, how much these transistors can be on to uh, eliminate the crossover distortion. And uh, and right now I'm using the Opamp NE5534, uh, the common Opamp used in audio circuits, and uh, I used it in a, in, in inverting uh, in inverting uh, configuration. So this is typical design you'll see, except that um, in order to uh, eliminate using a current source to drive this part of the circuit, uh, this biasing part of the circuit for this uh, push pull output. Uh, I use a technique called, uh, I guess, bootstrapping. As you can see, uh, the output is fed back into the um, into the biasing section by a, a high-value capacitor uh, in order to. Uh, so I'll just zoom that in order to uh, fix the voltage across this uh, resistor here. So. If you fix the voltage across this resistor, this resistor is going to act sort of like um, a poor man's uh, current source, uh, thereby fixing the voltage on both sides of this resistor at signal frequencies will increase its value uh, uh, quite considerably, uh, thereby it will, it will act like a current source, thereby uh, fixing this current that goes through this uh, this branch here, the biasing section. So I'll just quickly describe the circuit really from the input uh, go all the way to the output. So I'll just uh, quickly describe it. Okay, yeah, actually the circuit is uh, built up here, just a quick preview here. Uh, as you can see, it's not pushing a, a decent amount of uh, Decent amount of signal, about uh, 7.5 um, RMS uh, into a, a 5 ohm load, which I will show you in a second, and a uh, decent amount of harmonic performance, as you can see. Uh, so, if we just look at it, the next highest harmonic is uh, almost 50, be uh, 50 dB below the uh, the fundamental, which is at. Uh, at one kilohertz, and my signal is fed from my function generator up there. Um, feeding a 0.53 uh, peak to peak uh, signal into the uh, power amplifier. But anyway, so let's go back and describe. And also, my power supply is hidden back there, uh, it's plus or minus 18 volts. That's what I have. Okay, so let's just quickly describe it and then we'll do a quick demo of the in terms of listening test and then uh, and quickly the power output so the input comes through here through this 10k resistor uh, goes into the inverting uh, part of the uh, voltage amplifier this is used as a voltage amplifier I'm using a local feedback of 
100 picofarad for compensation and for uh, curtailing uh, the high frequency response of the amplifier because the gain bandwidth product of this amplifier is quite high, it's around 10 megahertz, so we gotta take care. Uh, so this, this, this capacitor here is basically making sure that the oil pump doesn't go unstable. And also I have here another capacitor here, sort of um, uh, used for uh, RFI uh, filter, so so we don't want any high frequency coming here and uh, basically getting into our circuit because uh, we don't want to amplify high frequency, we want just only audio frequencies. So this is my input impedance 10k and I have here 10k as well just to uh, for offset cancelling for uh, uh, for input current offset cancelling basically and uh, my voltage gain is determined by these two uh, resistors here this resistor as you can see it's fed back from the output back into the input it's about uh, 200 kilo ohms so the voltage gain of this circuit is about 200 over 10 that's 20 times about as you can see here 26 dB so if you do 20 log of 20 you'll get uh, 26 dB of gain uh, so I think this can be fed uh, from a pre-amplifier, so you need to uh, put in a pre-amplifier here if we are to use it uh, standalone. Okay, and uh, like I said, this part of the circuit is used to uh, remove the uh, crossover distortion of these two output sections. I have around, so this meter is measuring that, and I have that part here. This part adjusts the uh, crossover distortion. So for example, I'll quickly demonstrate the crossover distortion for you guys. So this is the output. So what I'll do is I will adjust this, which is tied to here. Uh, uh, and uh, basically uh, by adjusting this uh, part, I'll be able to uh, turn on and these guys harder or, or less by adjusting this that thereby my voltage here gets reduced or increased uh, and so I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate that so for example right now you can see that it's a you can't be, see any kind of crossover distortion but if I turn off uh, this guy as you can see if I lower the voltage so so just observe here if I lower the voltage as you can see there you go. Now we have a crossover distortion. So if we zoom in a bit, yeah, there you go. So that horrible crossover distortion, and of course our harmonics will go over the roof. And you can see that now the output is. Uh, so I just only have 0.6 difference. Remember, because this is uh, a Darlington output, I need around 1.2, around a little over 1.2 make sure that I uh, I don't have any crossover distortion so right now it's 0.6 so what I'll do is I will see if I can put both of them on the same shot here so take a look on that scope and the harmonic and the while well, adjust the resistor you can see that the crossover distortion while well, the crossover distortion disappears comes better now as you can see around there anything higher you just only turning on the transistors wasting power but right about there it looks good and my harmonics have went down to my original which is my highest harmonic being 50 dB below the fundamental okay so let's continue describing the circuit so as you can see this guy basically adjusts the crossover distortion and how much we can turn on these transistors to remove the crossover distortion and this these resistors are like our load resistor that well yeah sort of like a they are load resistors to this section, but basically they, they, are, they are setting the bias current that goes through this section of the circuit, uh, which feeds this transistor and this transistor, basically. So uh, what we have to take care of is when the signal here goes higher and higher, remember it's going to be turning off, turn, it turns off this transistor, it turns on this transistor, but at higher when the signal at its highest peak when it approaches VCC the current that goes into this transistor is going to be less so we have to make sure that we have enough current to keep these two transistors on right we don't want them to go uh, into cutoff right so basically this bootstrap section 
allows us to do that because it kind of simulates these uh, this 10k resistor as a current source thereby it doesn't matter what this voltage is doing this current this this resistor will remain as high as possible so at, at higher drives at the peak of the signal uh, this this guy will still get enough drive to keep it in the uh, saturation region both of the strand stretch basically and of course by using a Darlington type you minimize the amount of current that you need here right so this is better right so that's why you can see this two transistor these two resistors are quite high 10k if I was just only using one one output this guy directly then these these have to be considerably low and I don't think this will help much as well but you probably have to resort to using a, a current source to drive this section of the circuit okay and on the negative half basically it's it's, it's simple and just, just goes directly drives this uh, by the way this uh, ampl this power amplifier is direct coupled because I'm using plus or minus 18 volts so my signal is gonna rest at coescent when no signal is applied it, it will rest at zero so no need to, to use uh, filter capacitors so that's another plus three about the circuit so this this op pump directly drives this and it, because of negative feedback it, everything will settle down nicely where this will be zero and at coescent one no signals applied here this will uh, settle to zero okay anyway so you can Pause this uh, video and, and analyze the circuit further if you need. And by the way, this uh, this capacitor here is used at signal frequencies. This capacitor is used to uh, to make sure that these two base of these two transistors see the same signal. So this biasing section, which is useful at DC, it becomes useless at AC because I make, by shorting it using a 100 microfarad capacitor I'm making sure that uh, actually the that capacitor is here it's just 100 but this is almost a thousand microfarads I'm using a thousand microfarad capacitor here yeah, there you go so, so that's basically across this VBE multiplier circuit so that makes it makes sure that this op amp at signal frequencies drives this transistor directly and this transistor directly on the negative half and the, and the positive half okay so uh, yeah so that's basically it and you can see uh, the output power right now is 7.3 RMS I'm, measure, I'm using this to measure directly on my load my load is not 8 ohms I don't have two eight, I had two 8 ohm resistors but I misplaced one of them so I'm using close enough 100 watt 5 ohm resistor so Actually, it's getting a little warm right now, but it's okay. I'm using a fan to cool it a bit. So, the power transistors are mounted here, here, and here, and they get driven by these two BD139 and B, uh, BD140 and BD139. And there's the op amp NE5534 uh, is right here. The necessary feedback and the compensation circuit right there. Yeah. Okay. So how does this sound? So we're gonna test it for sound. By the way, let's see the calculation for power output. So the power output is right there. 7.34 RMS into five ohms, square that, you get around 10.8 watts. So we're able to output 10. If we attach a four ohm load, which I will, my speaker is ready. My speaker is right here, ready. So. I'm gonna put that in there and then I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get uh, much higher output power. Anyway, so let's reduce this. That's the output and you can see the harmonic output right now. I'm I'm happy enough with this. I think it's safe to say it's under 1% in terms of harmonic distortion because my first, my second harmonic is the highest harmonic from as you can see and it's about, if you see the cursor, so if you see here, it's about uh, the delta between this and this is about 50 dB. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, five and a little bit, and then I'm 10 dB per division. So yeah, about 50 dB. So I'm, I I can safely say that the THD is under one percent. Could be even better, but yeah. Anyway, so I'll pause this video and set up my speakers, and uh, we'll play a music and see how it sounds. 
Okay, I set up my music, so uh, here we go. I'll play here uh, this music here. Anyway, the the volume is uh, very low, so you can hear it. And so increase the volume. The uh, low frequencies are captured, but the, the, the bass response is very, very good. Uh, it's amazing uh, because uh, the amplifier is direct coupled. Uh, so basically, yeah, the, the, low uh, the low frequency response of the amplifier is excellent because it's uh, direct coupled. Uh, so no need uh, big capacitors to use to couple low frequency uh, low frequencies to the speaker so yeah it sounds very good uh, very very low on harmonics and uh, yeah so basically this is the improvement but obviously this uh, this design is uh, you know your typical uh, your typical class AB so it's supposed to have if you design it right you're supposed to have uh, very low uh, uh, harmonics so your THD should be very very low so yeah it sounds really good so anyway I'll uh, play now the music before uh, shutting it down. So anyway, yeah, take care. We'll see you in the next video.